you know, this came from eBay at some point. But as you can hear, there are some rivets inside of there that have fallen off. And we'll see what that means in a moment. We'll see why it needs to be repaired in a moment here. This, this whole assembly just comes out. It's, it's really, these, these keyboards are very, very well made and very simple to disassemble. They're like a Chevy Nova. Oh, there's, there's another rivet. Wow. <laughs> okay. These rivets used to go in these holes. And um, there should be one here. There should be one here. There should be one here. Well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Although this keyboard is very valuable because it's a very early keyboard, um, it's totally useless because no one can type on it. So what we want to do is we want to replace all the rivets. We're going to, we're going to take all these rivets off. They probably come off on your, fin your finger. Well, maybe not. We'll use a chisel, but <laughs> there are very few of them left. And we're going to, we're going to drill through this plastic base plate. Then we're going to push bolts up through this way and we're going to screw down nuts on top of them. We have all the tools that I believe we're going to need for our for our project here. Uh, I just wanted to show them real quick to you. I have a hammer. That's, of course, the most important tool you'll ever need to work with computers with. Um, uh, Phillips head screwdriver, hole punch all, which is actually neither one of those things, but it'll do. We have a chisel, fairly sharp, so that we can uh, strike the rivets off the back plate of the Model M internals. We have a wire brush for no apparent reason. We have a file for the same no apparent reason. We're gonna actually need to file some of the some of the posts down in there, so that, that's why we have it. This is probably the only thing that you're not gonna have in your in your toolbox. This is a 730 seconds inch nut driver, or 5.5 millimeter, I think is the metric equivalent. Um, I'm gonna try to leave a link to where to get one of these things. Uh, if you have one, great. I don't know why you would, but um, fantastic. Good for you. If you don't, you can buy one. Uh, we need that to open the back of the Model M. We have a 1 inch drill bit and a cordless drill. Drill not shown. Uh, we have a pair of tweezers so we can get at things that are not in the right spot. We got some side cutters. We got a needle nose pliers. And then, oh, and then we have some clamps. Uh, I got some safety squints here while we're taking off the rivets. If you can, if you if you feel like cleaning the thing, might have it all apart. I, I can't, can't imagine why you wouldn't want to do that. Um, when you take the keycaps off, you can put them in a in a glass or some sort of container and use denture cleanser, and that way you don't have to scrub them. They uh, all the dirt kind of floats to the top. Just steal your grandmother's, you know, maybe steal four of them. I steal more. She'll never notice. Also going to need an adjustable wrench. Not pictured here because I lost mine. It's on its way from Amazon. Uh, we also will need a bit of scrap lumber. This is what I had laying around. Um, it's just a, you know, whatever. It's not, not even true. But we're going to need something to receive the drilling so I don't screw up my desk surface. Well, it's later in the night and Amazon came. And they brought me some nuts and bolts. And... As it happens, they brought my adjustable wrench, too. You don't care about that. But um, I bought, I meant to buy uh, some slightly longer bolts uh, in case the the ones that I saw that people were suggesting were, were a little bit too short. I think I somehow managed to buy only 8 millimeter length. I, what I meant to do was buy, you know, 100 10 millimeter ones and then, and then 200, or no, and then a hundred, um, I guess 208 millimeter ones. But what I ended up buying was 200, 308 millimeters, whatever. In any case, these are M24, uh, bolts, a metric thing. And they are, have a Phillips head on them, uh, a pan head, which just means that got a round head. And, um, the M2 just means... The threading stuff. All right. Well, now we're going to start to try to remove the ribbits, ribbit, ribbits on the back of the back plane. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you 
Um, you know, these, these, these keycaps come off very, very easily. They're very simple to, to, uh, to remove. And, um, so chances are when you first get your model M, you're going to want to clean it and, and whatever, uh, just a word of warning before you try to remove the rivets or before you put it, put it upside down with its springs facing down on any surface, just try to try to put the keycaps back on because <clears throat> there's a tendency for the keycaps to get sort of, uh, pushed up against the surface that you're laying it down on. And then they get, they get, uh, they get unfurled. So you don't want to ruin your springs. So just make sure to put all the keycaps on before you flip it over. So here is the board on the back side, and we want to start to remove the rivets. But before we do that, we have to take off the PCB. Pretty simple. Just remove a bolt. Some of these older Model M's have this ridiculously over-engineered grounding strap that have this bolt on them. Later ones don't have this. Um, but if yours does, take it out like so. Make sure not to lose those. And then these are real easy to remove. You just, just be real careful. And uh, uh, these are just ribbon cables. Just be real careful and pull them out like so. And remove them from the PCB. PCB has been removed. Okay, so I have this uh, counterweight here. <laughs> uh, and just FYI, um, a lot of people, I, I've seen other people just sort of say, take a chisel and a hammer and sort of, um, uh, you know, smash, smash the side of the, of the rivets with the hammer. I'm going to, I'm not going to do that for two reasons. First of all, it's late and I don't want to make a lot of noise. And second of all, I think it, it's probably better to just, just kind of, if you have a sharp enough chisel, you can just kind of, kind of push them off. So let's try that and see how it goes. One at a time. Oh, and by the way, ah, man, I screwed up the label a little bit. Oh, well. Uh, by the way, oh, good. Yeah, they're coming off good. Uh, you want to be real careful when you remove the last rivet so the springs don't fly all over the place. Because if you lose them, you're SOL, buddy. You are SOL. Almost done. Can feel the thing moving under. My, I feel the earth move under my feet. I think I got them all off. No, I didn't. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to take this label off. What a shame. What a shame. I'm gonna stop this video right now and decide what I want to do about that. Uh, I'm gonna try to very carefully. Uh, cut around these rivets and then just pick up only only the bit of the label that really needs to be destroyed. We'll just we will destroy. It. All right. Yeah, man. All right. Sweet. If I removed all the rivets properly, we can separate the back plane from the barrel plate. And this is where you want to be careful. You don't want to just kind of lift it off and do it willy-nilly. You need to be careful because the springs will fly out on you and you will lose them. Don't do that. So let's try to pry this off very gently. I think I'll probably have to We have to Do we have some adhesive? No, 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 no. That's not adhesive. No, that's just the ribbon. Okay. Got it. These are just gonna come flying out, aren't they? Alright, let's see. We have something holding these in still. You! You! Step up the plate. Let's try it from the other side first. I'm just paranoid about these things flying everywhere, as you should be too. 
here. We can hear the springs just dying to fly out. Begging to die, begging to fly out. Did I miss a rivet? Oh man. Come on. Where are you? Which is what's stopping you here? Is it you? Don't do this. Don't do what I'm doing. You're going to ruin it. You're going to break it. Step away from the keyboard. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's work our way around the other side here. Let's see if we can get it from the sides. I can't quite get this in frame. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, oh, don't fly out, don't do it, why you got, why you gotta be such a bitch, seriously, just come off, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, so this this is beautiful. There's no there's no liquid damage on this. Uh, you can usually tell when something's been spilled on it. Uh, it's got liquid damage on the mat, but this one has none at all. Wow, these are cool. Oops. You see, they want they really desperately want to fly out and 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 lose themselves in your vacuum cleaner. Don't let that happen. What is this thing? Oh, it's a drainage thing. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. Okay, so these are drainage, little drainage um, uh, things that when you spill something on the keyboard, um, they'll... Is that true? No. Are, wait, what are these things? Maybe just... I have no idea. I don't know. Take all the feet out. Sometimes these feet will be rusty, or they'll be crinkled, or they'll have some schmoo on them. These look wonderful. I mean, this is a this is a keyboard from 1986. It's 2019. <laughs> it's 2019. Look at this. It's just it's just beautiful inside. Couldn't couldn't be more pristine. Now it's good it's good to note the. I have the advantage of videoing this, so I can always go back and look how they were they were in there. But it's good to note the the position of the of the springs and the and the direction of the feet. It might not be a terrible idea to video yourself doing this. You don't have to make it fancy. <laughs> Sweet. Now, oh wait, I missed one. See, they try to get away from you. Oh, here's another foot. I almost missed that one. Okay. Oh, this keyboard's this keyboard's travel is terrible. This is worse than a MacBook Pro. This one we don't actually have to clean because I already cleaned it at some point. But if we were gonna clean it, we'd take these keycaps off, all of them, we'd put them in a container and put that denture cleanser in there and then let them dry and put them all back on. It's all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. Uh, as I was gushing about how pristine this thing was, I noticed that there's a hairline crack. Let's see if I can get it in frame for you here. Right. Oh man, I don't want to. It's right here. Well, might not be able to see that there, but I don't want to screw it up too much. So Trust me, it's there. And it goes all the way from here all the way over to here. I was able to find out that we can repair it using some plastic cement um, that I just ordered from, from Amazon, trusty Amazon. And um, the reason that I, I should mention that, that it's possible to, to get spare parts for these machines, they, they are still being made, <laughs> believe it or not, by a company named Unicomp. Uh, if you go to PCKeyboard.com, you can actually buy a full, you know, new Model M from, a, well, 
I shouldn't use the air quotes there. They are new model M's. Um, but, uh, they are, um, slightly different than these, uh, these, uh, these barrel plates. Oh man, I don't want to break it. Oh God. Oh, 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 uh, have these vertical stabilizers here, uh, for these keys and, and also on the space bar, the newer model M's, which, which Unicomp I think only has a tooling for, um, don't have these, these, these little, these little hinge fittings. And I, I could buy a, a back, a, a new barrel plate for this thing for about 20 bucks, but I wouldn't be able to use the same set of keys. I'd have to, I'd have to take some keys off from a different model and put them on here. And it wouldn't be, at least we can take the keycaps off. Let's see, survey the damage here. I put a little bit of packing material underneath there. I know my fingernails are dirty. I know it. Um, so it's real easy to take the keycaps off. I typically just use a butter knife. Actually, before you before you embark on this, it's probably a good idea to take a picture <laughs> of this because uh, it's awful easy to forget where where these keys go. <clears throat> these key these keycaps, by the way, are of a particular style. They're two or double or. Uh, key stem and then a, and a key cap. Not all model M's are like that. These are. Um, all right, this will be a montage, I'm sure. Now, the truth is, is that we're gonna have to drill I think we're gonna have to drill with with this crack already there and already in place so these keys over here oh god look at that thing yikes these keys over here have these have these stabilizer on them this is only on older model M's the newer ones uh, don't have these these vertical stabilizers they still have a stabilizer on the on the space bar but not on these Oof. that crack is all the way to the edge i'm sure it wasn't all the way to the edge until i threw it around in the opening comedic segment turn it into a bit of a shit show you know it occurs to me that the flexing that we saw when i was trying to show you why it couldn't type on it. it was probably not due to the fact that the rivets were missing although that would cause flexing as well it was probably due to the fact that it was busted cracked right through and through my jars filling up what do i do i have made a hash of this well not really i mean it was it wasn't i don't know <clears throat> it's possible that i am the call i am the culprit of this crack knowing that it was missing rivets and throwing it around like a rag doll because when it when it's missing rivets and you get strain on it like when you throw it on a hard surface <laughs> like some people do <laughs> uh then you know 30 year old plastic has a tendency to crack <laughs> so oh well why don't they make this base plate out of the same material as these freaking keycaps? That's what I want to know. These keycaps will never die. So, yeah, it is almost through and through. I have a tiny little bit of plastic over here just hanging on for dear life. Uh, and it will certainly crack <clears throat> when we do the bolt mod. So, oh well. Executive decision. I believe that this thing is too busted to fix. Uh, well, maybe it's not too busted to fix, but it's, it's too busted to fix and uh, make a useful video out of it. If it doesn't work out, it's just going to be too long and too stupid.
I have another uh, barrel plate here. You can tell that it's got a very slight curve to it up top. I probably can't get that in frame. Anyway, trust me, it's got a slight, slight curve to it. Uh, it is not a flat piece of plastic by any stretch of the imagination, which is really the problem because if this was flat, just totally flat, then it would be conceivable that we could get it, you know, sort of without much problem, sort of bonded together and it would just need to lay flat. But since it needs to be shaped, um, I'm just guessing that it's going to not work. So what I'm going to do instead is we'll, we'll use this one. Now, these are slightly different from each other. Uh, I had hoped to keep it totally original. Can't do it. Oh, well, but it's not going to be any worse. It'll be better. Actually, th th this plastic is, is, is much stronger than, than this plastic. This is from a 1993 model M and it's just, it's just much thicker. So it won't have that same problem. This is pretty flimsy. So IBM learned from their mistakes as they were going along. Um, instead of having these, these little, uh, stabilizer channels, uh, they have a stabilizer insert in one of the barrels here. And so these two keys, which is plus and enter will be from another set that I have that, um, don't have the stabilizer bar, but they have a, a an additional, an additional insert that goes down through that thing. And, and that keeps it stabilized. Otherwise all the other keys will be original. I think, I don't think there's any other changes. No, they're all the same. Otherwise, uh, IBM was very kind. They didn't make very many changes to this board over time. So these are totally compatible. They'll fit perfectly the, the base plate that's part, that was part of the thing. And it will be good. I made a little jig to hold this thing while we drill it. Uh, it's going nowhere. It's pretty steady. Basically what you have to do is you have to file down each one of these posts where the rivets used to connect to until you reach the same height as the, as the rest of the plastic. This is fast. God, why are you watching this? Seriously, you got nothing better to do? This is excruciatingly boring. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this spike. Probably shouldn't be hitting it like this. I just want to start a little bit of a hole there. I don't think I'm going to break this thing. It's pretty tough. I'm paranoid for obvious reasons. And then we're just going to spin this thing for an unreasonable amount of time until we dig out a big enough hole that we can jam our. That might be far enough. Let's see. I'm going to sit on it. Indeed. Good. All right. Wash, rinse, repeat some ungodly number of times. I'm a moron. You don't got to file these things down. That's so dumb. Just take a side cutter and cut them off like that. That's it. That's all you got to do. But the thing is, when you do it, you got to remember which where, where they went because they look just like the ones that don't have any rivets on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's a pinata party fiesta <clears throat> in this place. I drilled out all the holes that I needed to drill out. You can see here daylight through there. And what I ended up doing was marking all the places that needed drilling as I as I chopped them off with a with a sharpie, silver sharpie. So um I knew where to where to drill. I think I may have drilled one too many or two too many holes. 
and probably some of these are too off center to be useful but we're gonna see next step is to put the feet on put the feet back in and we're gonna suspend this and uh, put the, ba the, the back plate over it and try to put our bolts through. What I ended up doing was um, taking some bolts and running them along the sides. I can kind of barely see those bolts there. There's one. There's another one here. There's another one here. And I sort of went all around the frame adding bolts. You can probably see them better from the top. There's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, etc. I, I, I just sort of went around the, the outside of the frame and I put one in the middle. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to put the feet back in and um, then I'm going to put the back plate on over it with just these, just these holding it together and then I'll put the rest of the bolts in the, the, the bolt uh, sizing is perfect because uh, the, you can just screw them in. They stay. You don't have to hold them or anything, which is very handy. I'll have to turn it this way because that's the picture I have. Hilarious. Two thousand years later. I have this plank suspended through the use of some very high technology. Two boxes. Uh, there's just a little bit of space under them. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the rubber mat that was and will be between the membrane and the feet, and I'm going to cover it up, being very careful not to... Not to uh, have these bolts just just sticking through here Being very careful not to disturb the feet and good so that should keep them more or less in place if we're lucky and we can put this back plate back on Nuts ready to go. Give them a wrench. And we got it in the right orientation. Yes, yes, maybe. Tricky here. Okay, we got one nut popping up there, one bolt popping up there. Let us capture it. What a pain in the ass. Do a bull mob video, they said. It'll be fun, they said. An easier one. Maybe. This here. Yeah. One capture.
seem to be lining up. All right. I think we've done it. Except fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. No, no, wait, wait, I, what? Oh, holy shit, I think I did it right. I did it right. Oh my God, that's great. Fantastic. I had to uh, remove the back plate again because this screw right here, oh, I took it out already. This, there was a screw here before. And um, it's, <clears throat> it's drilled slightly off center. <clears throat> so when I um, screwed, tried to screw all the uh, nuts down, it actually prevented the, the back plate from fitting against the, prevented the barrel plate from fitting against the back plate. So I had to take it apart and uh, reseat the feet. And I took the screw out, and I know for sure now that all the, Screws that are left in there are, uh, or the, all the bolts that are left in there will, will be through and through both the rubber mat and the back plate. So got the uh, base plate retacked on here. Uh, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen bolts in it at the moment. I think that should be enough to to prevent the. Sp Springs and feet from uh, coming becoming dislodged when I move it around. I'm still going to be very careful with it because I don't want to. I don't want to have to do this again. So the rest of the of the um, bolts, I'm just going to I'm going to flip this over and then I'm just going to push them through all the ones I can anyway. Uh, and then I'll screw down the rest of them. And then we'll pretty much be done. Guzzard guts. Um, this isn't really that big of a problem, but <clears throat> I flipped this thing over after tacking it in with these bolts, and I noticed that I am missing a spring. And I thought to myself, I know I put that in there. Well, I did put it in there, and the foot's down there. It's just that the spring came off. So, and that's actually not too hard to fix. I think, I think basically we just got to go and kind of get it in there and twist it on. Well, I remember now why I thought that you could just twist it in place. I've done this once before. Um, take a chopstick, like so, and you file down one end of it so that it fits inside the spring, like that. And then, if everything goes right, you can sort of look inside and make sure that it sort of top of the foot pedal foot stake whatever it's called and you turn it clockwise and it should stick on there yep all right that was karma that was a little too easy Something real bad's about to happen. We're going to drive the rest of the bolts through the board. I'm probably not going to film all this. I'm just going to do one or two. If I can get any through the board. Look at that. Look at that. It's going. It's going. It's not lifting the rest of the thing up, is it? Is it? I'm just concerned. I, I drilled a number of these pretty off center, and I can't imagine they're going to line up perfectly. So some of them I'm going to they're going to lift the barrel plate off the base plate because it won't be lined up with the hole properly. That's possible. I'm not sure, but in any case, you get the gist. Uh, screwed in all the bolts. 
<laughs> I screwed in literally all the bolts. And I'm not entirely confident that it, the board surface isn't warped uh, from not... I haven't turn, turned it over yet. I want to put the keycaps back in before I turn it over, which is why you see some keycaps on there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the keycaps back on. I'm going to turn it over and see uh, how many how many bolts actually made it through the other side. It's as I feared. We have a problem, Houston. Uh, the holes that I drilled in the barrel plate uh, weren't all true. They weren't all straight, which is no surprise because I don't have a drill press. So I'm using a drill and I'm doing my best to push it down as straight as I could be, but some of them are a little more diagonal than our tolerances allow here. So this one, I don't know if you can see it or not there, uh, is pushing up against the base plate, which is dislodging the feet near it. Uh, similar over here. And I think there's another one somewhere. Uh, thankfully, they are in dissimilar locations. So that's actually okay. <clears throat> um, what I should have done, instead of all this rigmarole with inserting the feet and trying to both fit the base plate to the barrel plate and insert the feet at the same time, that's a bad idea. What I should have done was, was I should have done a test fit of the barrel plate to the... Uh, to the base plate with a few nuts and see, you know, detect which ones, which ones weren't true. So what, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to end up removing the bolts that have holes that aren't true. And, uh, that'll be fine. Uh, these things work, you know, the structural <laughs> integrity of the thing is not going to be compromised by a few bolts missing it. They work just fine with a few rivets missing, so a few bolts isn't going to make any bit of difference. Uh, it, they would make a difference if they were in there, if all the holes that were that were uh, misdrilled were in the same spot. Thankfully, I don't think they are. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part again, and I'm going to remove all the feet, and I'm going to remove the bolts that aren't in true holes and do the test fit to make sure that it, it can go together. I've made a liar out of myself. Remember how I said I drilled maybe one or two too many holes in the, in the board? You probably don't remember that. Why would you remember that? I remember it. Uh, what happened was I put screws in, in or bolts in holes that I drilled that had no no exit points on the back plane so <laughs> uh, I think I don't remember where they were to be honest with you it doesn't really matter but what was happening was it was deforming the plate because it was pushing up and uh, for obvious reasons that doesn't really work so um, you know these these uh, I would you know I had a bolt in and it was just pushing right up against this thing instead of going through um, so it turned out not to be that my, a lot of the holes that I thought weren't, uh, weren't true, weren't true, uh, that they were, it's just that, uh, the back, the barrel plate was deformed enough so that they appeared to be un, un, unreceptive. So I took all bolts out that didn't need to be in there and I left a couple I think two others out that really did have uh, a problem with uh, the um, being too diagonal and uh, I don't think I have to put any nuts in it to see that it actually is fine it'll come together okay um, one thing you should probably do uh, I am very grateful to the people who have done this before me because they've figured out all the right nuts, nut sizes, or sorry, bolt sizes to do this with. Um, 
these eight millimeter bolts are exactly the right size. And the reason that's important is because I'm going to turn this this way. Oh God, I don't, can't even see this thing. Okay, uh, you can see all those all those bolt uh, ends sticking out there. Um, the reason that's important is that it's awful easy to screw these down not quite enough and not not be able to put the nut on. So with these eight millimeter bolts. You know that when you screw them down all the way, you know, sort of hand tight, you don't want to use any machine tools here because it'll ruin the back plate or the barrel plate, but hand tight. And um, then you can sort of look on the, you know, sort of get this, this view of it and see that all your, all your bolts are sticking out approximately the same distance. And then when you put back plate on it, They'll all come through an appropriate amount to screw the nut onto. I can figure out how to do that. Just gotta get one in. There we go. That one. Yeah. yeah. So you can you can sort of tell that uh, these are all going to be fine if you push it up enough in various places. It's it's a bent, so it's uh, it's not just it's not flat. But if you use your imagination, a little bit of Newtonian physics, it's, it's fine. So I'm not going to put any nuts on that. I'm going to now put the feet back in. My apologies, my camera ate the footage of me actually screwing in all these screws off. Although it would have been fascinating, I'm sure. Uh, but I already had footage of me screwing in screws before, so you get the idea. But it all worked. And I also put the keycaps back on. And there we go. Oh, it's like butter. It's like butter. It's really great. It really is. <laughs> it really is great. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's great. That's about it. I'm going to put the uh, PCB back on. I'll show you how to do that real quick and I'll put it back in the case and we'll try it out. XEV is a great way to test a keyboard if you're on Linux, at least. I imagine you have to be on Linux, or some Unix, anyway. If you use something else, I don't know what to tell you. All right, we'll hit the keys one by one, see if anything shows up on the screen as a result. Escape, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. All the keys work. That's good news. I think that does it for me. I wish you luck with your keyboard and your project.